Hey everybody, welcome back. Am I the a-hole for banning my husband's mother from my wedding? Court is in session. You may be seated. Oh, rise with the Ronald Rush Allen. I think she's having a stroke or something. I, 27 female, am getting married to my lovely fiance, 31 male, this summer. I have a daughter from a previous partner, Hannah, and my fiance has a son, Riley. Hannah and Riley are the reason my fiance and I started dating each other all those years ago. He became best friends with her in swimming class a few years ago, and my fiance and I met like that. For this reason, we've decided to try to incorporate them into the wedding somehow in age appropriate roles that will be easy for them. Uh. My fiance's mother has always hated me. She thinks I'm gross for having been a teen mom and she believes her son deserves someone better, i.e. a virgin. Isn't that like kind of like an old way of thinking? It's a little outdated. As you can see, she's very sexist. She thinks I'm an unchast, unchast? How do I say that? She thinks I'm a <laughs> Here to ruin her son, which is extremely ironic because I was actually married to my daughter's father when she was conceived. And he left during the pregnancy, but my fiance had a shotgun wedding to his son's mother when she was two months pregnant. Oh goodness, the hypocrisy I see here. Love that double standard. I was at my fiance's house yesterday and we were talking about what role we could put his son in for the wedding. My fiance's mother popped in unexpectedly. She asked about what we were discussing. Fiance told her we were finding a role for his son in the wedding. And he said that my daughter was going to be a flower girl. She responded by saying my daughter should be kept away from the ceremony because otherwise everyone will know he's marrying a used woman. The double standards are so strong with this one. Like, does she not see that she's being like completely hypocritical here? She doesn't care. She said it in a different language, but I still understood. I saw red and started shouting at her. I tried to be respectful for years and I had enough. I told her she was banned from the wedding and my fiance kicked her out of his house. I'm glad he supported you on that decision. We are both being bombarded with texts and calls saying that we are wrong for banning her and people specifically asking me to let her come because they know my fiance will keep her banned until I say so. No. <laughs> Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. They keep saying that watching your child get married is a beautiful thing and that I'm depriving her of that. Oh, if it isn't the consequences of my actions. Absolutely not. His first wedding was a mess. Oh, okay. And I'm starting to feel like I should unban her. Am I the a-hole? No! <laughs> So yeah, I agree that it's like, oh, poor mom, not gonna be there for her husband's marriage, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, maybe she should have thought of that. <laughs> Listen, it's easy to say from an outside perspective. We don't know these people. We're not stuck with these people for the rest of our lives. If you were to unban her, it would be an arm's length situation. Also, did she apologize? Did she? Why don't people ever apologize, especially when they're wrong? You can allow her to come to your wedding. And if you and your partner agree, you can also not allow her to come. As long as you and your partner are on the same page, both options are totally morally acceptable. Not the a-hole. Here is the thing. This is a nice little thing to go along with this bigger thing. Oh no, not the thing. I hate the thing. I'm getting a doesn't stand up to strong women vibe from your partner. From the way he only reacted to his mom when you did. From the way he's letting you take the lead on this decision. And from the way his mother feels empowered to treat his partner. It's not a real mystery where that comes from. It was a survival skill with his mom. This is fine in your relationship if it's fine for both of you, but it's relevant to your decision because you should expect that he's going to look to you for how to react if you decide to let his mom back in. And she decides to complain about you wearing white when you're a scarlet woman or whatever. She clearly feels empowered to do it. And if you unban her, she knows she can walk on you with impunity. So she'll probably do it again. That doesn't seem fair. I think really carefully about how much you want to deal with her on your wedding day. She can be at the wedding. She just can't come to any of, you know, the fun things, right? I can understand where this person is coming from, but I also appreciate that the groom is on her side. It's his mom, after all. Excellent answer. There's a few middle options, like treat her as a guest, not family. Let everyone know why, or ceremony only, ban from reception, whatever's chosen to stick together with the partner. That's a good idea. You could ban her from the party. You know, just, you can show up to the church, but that's it. I do agree that if you let up and you like don't 
show that this kind of behavior isn't acceptable and you reward her for that behavior, then she will in turn behave however the hell she wants to. She can come to the wedding. Maybe she doesn't come to the party after. Can I come to? Anything that lets her into the wedding would need conditions that she would need a minder slash escort for the whole time. Oh my gosh, they, they have those? Literally people that like watch unruly people and unruly mother-in-laws and make sure that they behave. Buddy, this is news to me. No, it's the perfect job for me, guys. If she kicks off, she gets kicked out immediately and they have the manpower to do this and make it stick. I attended a wedding as a mother-in-law minder once. Wait, wait. A mother-in-law minder, like, so like a babysitter. <laughs> I let her know that she was on thin ice from the start and that I was actively looking for a reason to get her kicked out. I followed her everywhere and even got help for the bathroom breaks. She kept looking at me and pausing before saying anything. Wow. Oh, buddy. And it sucks that you had to spend a wedding like that. But seriously, come on. Can't people just behave? Like, just keep it together. God. Where's the fun in that? I kept leaning in to hear what she was saying. The fact that you actually have to do this for a grown-ass woman. <laughs> Overall, it was exhausting, but worth it for the bride and groom. Kudos to you, smoky cat. First time I've heard of a mother-in-law minder, but what a great solution for lots of weddings. And kudos to you for doing this for this couple. Yeah, like literally, I'm, I'm very taken aback. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this before. If you have, let me know. But like, the fact that you even need a mother-in-law minder. <laughs> I'm dying, that's so funny. Ah! All right, moving on. Am I the a-hole for not reinviting my sister and her family to my wedding after we changed it? My fiance and I plan to have a large wedding in July at a venue in the country. I guess that was too out of the way for most people because only 14 people RSVP'd that they were coming. Oh, that's a bummer. That, that hurt my feelings. That hurt my feelings. We'd already set aside money for our wedding and since there was no longer going to be a lot of people coming, we decided to splurge. 14 people, really? People travel for weddings all the time. So we asked everyone who RSVP'd that they were coming if they could take a few extra days off for a longer trip to Hawaii, all expenses paid by us. Everyone said yes, so we started booking tickets and suites at this nice resort. Hawaii is expensive too. Have a wedding in Hawaii, it's gonna run you uh, like tens of thousands. And the fact that you're covering the expenses for everybody is like honestly a really great solution. Cause then you're rewarding the people who said they would show up. And you also got to have a way better wedding in Hawaii. Aloha hoi. Ah! We also planned some things to do while we were there. Everyone was really excited. Now my sister who RSVP that she and her family weren't coming is upset. Oh, gonna cry. That I didn't reinvite her when we changed plans. She's upset that she's not getting a free trip. That's why. <laughs> she thinks that it's basically a different trip. So they should have been told. Okay, she can come, but she's got to pay her way. Originally, she said she couldn't come to our wedding because that time of year is very difficult for her and her husband. The summer is the busiest time for their business. Oh, so suddenly you're not busy anymore? They have a landscaping business. Also, she said traveling that far with all her kids would be difficult because of the long car ride. It would have been around a three hour drive from where she lives, depending on where you are. Like it's pretty far to go to Hawaii. Like I'm just saying like, I loved it, but that was a far, that was a long, long trip. So it doesn't make any sense to me for her to say she can go on a longer trip even farther away. Yeah, like she literally lied to you and told you a reason. And clearly that reason is a lie because now she's totally fine with going on a trip to Hawaii. The plane trip is nine hours long. Also, she says it's unfair because our brother and his family gets to go while hers doesn't. That's making her kids feel left out because their cousins are going and my sister says it's like playing favorites. That didn't seem to bother her when it was in the country and not Hawaii. My sister and her family would be five or more people. So even if we wanted to reinvite them, they would cause us to go way over budget. They can come. They just have to pay. Not gonna say it. The only other option would be to drastically downgrade the trip we already promised to everyone. Absolutely not, nope. Nobody, nope, 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 absolutely not. It just seems totally unfair to everyone else, but my sister also thinks I'm being unfair and says we pulled a reverse bait and switch. I'm gonna pretend you didn't just say that. Okay, you're not the a-hole, like absolutely not. Maybe you should have told her about the trip. Then you wouldn't have had the opportunity to hear her reasons, which directly contradict why she couldn't come to your wedding in the first place and didn't think it was important enough when it was in the country. And now all of a sudden that it's in Hawaii and it's all expenses paid, she suddenly wants to come. 
Am I hearing that correctly? Not the a-hole. She doesn't want to celebrate your wedding. She wants Hawaii. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, she literally doesn't care that you're getting married. She just wants a free trip. She can pay for that herself. Seriously. This is 100%. OP wants a free trip. Too bad. Just tell her. I'm sorry you feel that way, but is your busy season suddenly less busy? Can your kids suddenly handle a longer trip? Told me those were your reasons for not coming, and those reasons haven't changed, so let's move on. If she keeps pushing, let her know that your budget is maxed out. But you'd never stop her from coming. They'll just have to pay for themselves and now the whole family can have fun together. Watch how fast she backtracks. I had an issue with a friend like this once where I offered to pay for a villa for us. It was a pay what they could situation. And once I found out that not everybody could come, I ended up canceling and, you know, told everybody, okay, well, let's just go somewhere cheaper. Like not everybody can afford it. And uh, my friend found out that the trip was canceled and she was pissed, dude. She was so pissed. And she was like mad that, you know, like, like we didn't tell her that the trip was canceled or whatever. And I was just like, not everybody can afford to come. So we just decided to go somewhere that was a little bit more affordable. Nah, man, she really wanted that villa. She wanted it so bad, dude. So bad that uh, she was willing to end our friendship over it. So that's the tea there. She sounds lovely. It wasn't about a girl's trip. It was about getting a, an essentially like free trip to, I won't say where we're going because then it'll give it away. You're not the a-hole, my dear. All right, I left the best for last. All right, this one is a doozy. Attention! Let me get him! Am I the a-hole for telling the truth in the wedding toast? I'm a 30-year-old male, and my best friend got married last week. I just bought a house, and my wife is expecting our son in November. So I let him know I was limited in what I could contribute financially, but I did tell him I would try my best. So I went to the bachelor party in Maine. I rented a tux and paid for mine and my wife's dinner at the rehearsal dinner. I also had a gift of $300 that I was going to give them, but we will get to why I didn't give it to them. His, now wife, then fiance, texted me multiple times a day with updates. Fine. I didn't always respond, and I got to the point where if I didn't respond at least once a day, I got a call from my buddy. I have a full-time job and I'm redoing some rooms in my house, so I'm busy. She texted me for the following reasons. My wife was not allowed to talk about her pregnancy at all. She didn't want anyone to focus on that more than her, the bride. Oh, buddy. She was not going to order special food for my wife. No one asked her to. My wife was fine with whatever she was going to be served. Please pack up your knives and go. I was not helping the groom enough. He had to help her with favors, seating charts, and programs. So I had to help him with those things according to her. She also said to get ready to help with thank you notes after the wedding. She said if I was a true best man, I would offer to pay for the bar bill. I don't even know what that means. What? Okay, it's giving bridezilla. She had to reread and approve my speech before the rehearsal and wanted to be included as much as my buddy. She told me to make up things if I had to. <laughs> well, so I just lie. Just lie. Nobody else is gonna know that. I was also not allowed to include anyone but the two of them and no inside jokes or stories about my buddy that didn't include her. Her last text said to tell my wife to keep it together and not make a pregnancy scene. <laughs> during the wedding. Also, she wanted her to choose a dress that downplayed her pregnancy as much as possible. Buddy, okay. Uh... I was so aggravated. I spoke to my friend to see if he could reason with her. He told me to just play ball on this one. It's her day and cut him a break because he'd be dealing with her nonsense for the rest of his life. I mean, you don't like have to to deal with it. I was annoyed, but calm down. The day of, all the bride and my buddy do is scold me, berate me, and bark oh. orders. To hell with both of them off of their heads. I head down to the bar for a drink. The bride's mother is there and warns me not to get drunk because I've ruined her daughter's day enough. Final straw. I didn't give them the card with the cash, and in the speech, I used my friend's exact wording about having to deal with her nonsense for the rest of his life. I wished them the best and told him I'd always be there for him, especially during the divorce. Am I the a <laughs> Yeah, listen, in that kind of situation, I would be kind of driven to my limit as well. I would have also maybe dropped out of the wedding. I don't know. I don't know what I would have done in that situation because it just sounds like it's a very stressful situation for OP and everybody involved. Who knows? People do crazy things under stress. Wishing them a divorce though. I agree with the 
putting up with her for the rest of his life. That's funny. Judging by that, I feel like other people could probably relate to it as well. Even mentioning the word divorce at a wedding is like, I think maybe a step too far, but that's just my opinion. Let's see what everybody else said. Everyone sucks. Okay, we're off to a good start. Groom knew he was marrying a piece of work and instead of protecting his interests, he co-signed, aided, and abetted his wife's atrocious behavior. Two, his wife sucks for trying to regulate your wife's body, for allowing her insecurities to cloud her judgment and being the very definition of a bridezilla. Three, you for not taking the high road and waiting until the very last minute to defend your wife's honor. Yeah, oh yeah, I didn't even register that. I feel like you should have definitely defended your wife before the wedding speech. Maybe he did. Maybe he just kind of like left that out of the equation. I don't know. He didn't write about it. So I'm going to assume that he didn't say anything. You chose the wrong moment to defend your wife. Yeah. Look, dude, you were totally justified, but you also had ample opportunity to jump off the crazy train before it got to this point. Being a good friend means having the comfortability and latitude to say no when your friends are off the rails. You waited until the last minute and let your emotions get the better of you. Your wife deserved better from these people and from you in this moment. Yes, get new friends. These people suck hardcore. <laughs> I completely agree with that. Yes, you were driven to the point where you couldn't take it anymore. Maybe you were trying to, you know, play nice the entire time, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that you could have spoken up a little bit sooner. And if it meant that you didn't go to the wedding, whatever, you're defending your pregnant wife's honor. There is honor in that. Because that's what heroes do. I think you're missing a piece here. From what I gather, dude was trying to go along with all this unbelievable BS because he was trying to be a supportive friend. Then he reached to the point of, okay, you know what? What? this actually. We've all reached that point somewhere in our lives and made asses of ourselves. It's true because like, you know, in a wedding situation and like sometimes I deal with this stuff too. You're like, okay, you're getting married even though you're kind of acting like a d right now, but I guess I will kind of ignore it because it's your wedding and it's whatever you want to do, blah, blah, blah. I completely understand where this person is coming from. We've all reached a point in our lives and made asses of ourselves, but this guy was 100% justified in burning this friendship to the ground by the point of the toast and salted the friggin' earth in the process. Us. I gotta respect that. <laughs> I would have paid money to see that. That's how I feel about it. That's how Reddit feels about it. How do you feel about it? Let me know. Everyone sucks. The big one. 